everybody, and welcome to today's live stream. Over here, we have Patrick with Light Source Engraving. And we have Rich, the Louisiana hobby guy. And up there, over there, we got Steve, the hobo with the wood. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Laser Makers Realm. Well, we took a week off for Mother's Day. I uh, hope everybody had a great holiday, enjoyed time with the family, and uh, we have got a lot to catch up on on what what we've been up to since we've been gone. And in today's project, we're going to be sharing one of Rich's designs, and it's a, a patriotic gnome. I mean, he loves his gnomes. We, we played with them a couple of times, and this is a, a patriotic version. It's pretty neat. Uh, but before we get to the gnome and his file, we're going to catch up with each of the... <laughs> laser makers i'm oh, not sure where everybody's at but that's patrick over there and patrick we want to go it over there to you first and see what you've been up to since the last live stream so what you got well since the last live stream i did upload one project to laser makers realm and it was the p mag so that was for the fiber laser folks and if you missed it this is the episode show you how to do this p mag um Let's see. I'm going to give this away at the end of the stream. So if you're in the USA and in a free state, then you are eligible to receive one of these. Cool. So thanks. Thanks for being here for that. I the like main the thing free, I've been free, up. I like the free state part. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it has to be a free state. The main thing I've been up to over the last couple of weeks is I finally released version two of my Galvo laser air assist kit. So I've upgraded the valve to a much better valve. Very cool. This tube actually is contained within the base, so you can mount it anywhere on the laser, not just hanging off the side. And we have a flat nozzle and a nice flexible plastic, so there's less parts involved. There's only one size of tubing. Um, it's much more simple and lighter, and it's working great. I've been running tons of brass coins, and let me just move the camera over. Then you can see here I've been using this religiously. I use them on every Galvo laser, so here's the other one I have for this laser. But those are available on my website, of course. <clears throat> Very cool. So that's one of the main things I've been up to. I've also have some swag for another YouTube channel, Bourbon Country Reacts, is now on my website. I did a flask for them and uh, a flask and shot glass set. So that is up and available for sale. Check out that channel. I've also, let's see, have three videos in the works. First one is going to be making rubber stamps on this CO2 Gala laser behind me. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and get those notifications. I'm going to show you how to make rubber stamps on the CO2 Gala. And one of the most cool things I'm doing is I have these little wood dowels that I've uh, wood dowel I've cut to size. And I'm going to make a stamp that fits on the end of this so it stamps little cards so people keep track of how many sodas they've bought. Uh, another one's for an ice cream place, how many ice creams. So oh, once like you get a, so many stamps on your oh, card, yeah, you get yeah, the rewards. Yeah. Like the but I'm able to make these okay. little tiny things with the CO2 Galvo. And it looks like I've moved everything around. You'll never be able to see this. <laughs> but this is a little soda with a straw. <laughs> I see it. Now, and is it that works. Rubber? Yep, it's rubber. It glues right to the end of this dowel. Let me That's, get it off my yeah. eyes. Yeah. But it'll be right there like that. Yeah. So able to get that detail with this uh, CO2 Galvo. So that video is going to be coming out. Well, is, that, is that a cold, um, wrench, cold wrench dowel? Yeah. Yeah, that's small. Yeah, yeah, it's tiny. Uh, think the size of a, a pen cap. Ah, wow. It's it about the diameter. The other video, which I know people are going to want to see it, engraving glass with your fiber laser. I've, I've already got, got a question glass. about that. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. I've got glass uh, engraved to the point where it's almost as good as a UV laser. And I've delayed this video coming out because I've got a, an announcement for the channel that will happen this week. And I don't want to give that away. But I've delayed the video coming out to wait for this announcement. But. And for those people out there, we'll get to the questions in just a few minutes. Yep. This was done with the fiber laser. Very nice. For those of you that can't see it, they see a small screen in the bottom right corner you'll see an expand button where you can make it your full screen so you can see better. So if I put this black behind it. Yeah, yeah that looks yeah. nice. You can see, and it is smooth, like totally smooth. There's no chipping. And, and under the microscope, it looks as good, almost as good as a UV laser. Wow. And you got a video. I'm going to show you how all you have to do is invest about... Uh, probably 30 bucks and you'll be able to do glass with your fiber laser and achieve pretty darn good results. And I've worked with Geo. He's did some settings conversions. So I'm going to have some settings available for people to start with for their RACUS uh, and JPT sources, uh, 30 watt, 50 watt, 60, 80s. Awesome. So I think that'll be a, a really big, big hit. It just opens up another world of possibility for your fiber laser. If you don't have a CO2, then you can use your fiber and get... Actually, based on these results, I'd rather use the fiber as opposed to the CO2 Galvo at the moment for glass. Mm -hmm. That's the way that is. And then I'm still working on that photo tutorial, which that'll be coming soon. It's just lots of stuff going on. I was also disassembling a, an old trailer, a tow-behind utility trailer. The other day, I'm going to start filming pressure washing and cleaning it and um, cleaning with the three in one laser, 1000 watt laser. <laughs> so I'm going to strip the paint off the whole thing. That, <laughs> that, thing, fun, fun to watch. that Yeah, that trailer's from the early 90s. It's my dad's, and he's been wanting to get it stripped and repainted. And I'm like, I got an idea. Let me film it. It'll make a great video. I'll I show want what to this that. thing does. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to use it to not only cut the fenders off because the fenders are all rusty and have holes in them, uh, but cut the fenders off and then strip the paint. So that should that should be fun. Nice time lapse video and hopefully show the whole the whole thing. And so for you that folks is, that that do things like this with with acid washing and pressure washes and and sandblasters and things like that, you're going to want to watch that video because. This machine is a beast, let it, me tell you. <laughs> it is fun to watch. <laughs> Let's see. And then if you're in Michigan or doesn't matter where you're at, but Michigan is where I will be coming up the first weekend in June for an axe throwing tournament. It's the Ragnarok Axe Throwing Tournament by, um, let's see, Five Axes or Bearded Axe. And let's see. I did have the coin right here. Where'd it go? Sorry. Yeah, that coin is amazing. If you're not in full screen, put it in full screen now. You're going to want to see this. Yeah. So here's, uh, let's see, side one of the coin. This is all original design. And it's done in two, two different engraving layers. And there's different finishes there. Then on the back is the, uh, come on, come on. Yeah, there. On the back's the Bearded Axe logo. Sorry. But anyway. That's impressive. It looks like but anyway, I'm going to be there point. be there with lasers doing laser engraving the whole weekend. So if you're in the area, stop by and say hi. Show up at this tournament. I'll be engraving coins, be engraving wallets. Uh, let's see. I can now do custom credit cards. If you want a custom credit card, that's another thing I've been up to. Can you give me one with an unlimited limit? <laughs> I have a have a little card reader, so we can do that. But yep, yeah, that should be uh, that should be a fun time. So that's about all I've been up to. Very How long good. has it been? Well, you've been up oh, to something, something else too. I I can see them behind you. You did my gnome. Can we see what you did? Yeah, go ahead and show us your sure. version of the gnome. <laughs> Let's see. Actually, the whole family did one, and I accidentally knocked this one apart. Way to go. The whole family did. That's cool, getting the whole family yep. involved. 
So here's two of them. Very nice. You get the focus off of my eyeballs. So there's two and then two more. Yep, so we just sat at the kitchen table, myself, the wife, and two kids, and the four of us. Look out the paint. Oops, so I just knocked that one off. And the four of us made our gnomes. Very good. Very nice. And, and that is a good family night. That that's, yes. that's an awesome idea. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, it was a lot of fun, and there's no right or wrong way. Just have fun making it, and... Uh, I knocked that one off. <laughs> he's still in good shape. All right. Very good. All right. Okay. Well, uh, we, we are going to get to all the Q&As. And, and I, anybody that's got questions about what Patrick was talking about as far as the – in fact, yeah. when Patrick started in on his disassembling the trailer, I was like, wait a minute. Did we just derail here? What happened? We're going – but then I, I, have I seen, knew where that was going. Yeah, I, and I've seen the videos, but I was like, wait a minute, we're drawing about lasers. Now we're going to rebuild a trailer, but watching that is cool. So uh, that, that's going to be a good one to, to be on the lookout for. Uh, so but we are, if you've got questions about anything that he shared about what he's doing or will be doing, put them over in the comments. We're going, I'm going to share a little bit with you, and we're going to, uh, Pat, or, uh, Rich is going to uh, share his design on the, the gnome and then both the guys are going to be cutting them out and he's got a video assembly video going i'll be monitoring the questions and then feeding the questions to the guys so anything that you have that you want to discuss please if you haven't already put the comments drop them in there or questions we are going to do the q a just as soon as we get through recapping who, who what we've been doing and with that i'll share a little bit with you about what i've been doing since our last uh live stream so um I did the gnome and let's see yours. I, I will say I I don't have a family of, of uh of <laughs> four or five that I can sit around the table uh, and initially I just wanted to you know test it, putting it together and it this is just the basic basic cutout but then in typical hobo style I did have to do a little something something and this is my guy. I, I changed him up a little bit. I do have the Very original. Nice. I do have the original with the Statue of Liberty, but I was like, you know what? Uh, that was done with glitter cardstock and the faux fur, and uh, he turned out pretty cool. Very nice. That is uh, cool. But the uh, a few things. Uh, the, the Laser Makers Realm channel this week. Uh, I shared. Uh, I, I call it my gift card box uh graduation time coming up a lot of graduation parties going on you've always got that gift table sitting there where people go in and sit down all the different gifts but a lot of people are just doing cards right and you just have cards laying around well i designed a box that's where you can just drop your cards in the box it's got the atm artwork on there uh and Deposit only, gift cards and cash uh, only. The that's back perfect of it, for weddings. Yeah, and that's uh, there was some comments in the video that I didn't even think about. Somebody's going to use it as a ballot box, uh, and you oh, know, yeah. at, at work, you know, they yeah. had an election going on. I'm like, yeah, it's perfect. But the back the of it, in box, ballot box, yeah. Yeah, the back of it just slides up, so easy to easy to contain, easy to keep, and everything nice and organized in one place. That's the file that I shared on Laser Makers Realm since our last live stream. Uh, but in addition to that, I've been extremely busy on Hobo with Wood. And I'm going to see if I can figure out how to add this to the stream. There we go. Uh, for those of you who are, who are not aware, uh, HoboWithWood.com is my website. And I try to share at least two or three projects every week. So if you've been on the, the website and haven't been there in a week or so, there's a lot of new stuff you haven't seen. This is the home page, and the way that this works on the, the new the new products will always propagate or load first on the home screen. But if you go to the digital files, you will, I'm working on organizing this so that you don't have to go through everything. Digital files will show you all of the files. Right now, I've only got 39 projects there. 14 of them are earrings and earring designs in my earring holder. 
We've got a couple different patriotic things. In fact, I'll probably end up putting my version of the gnome here on the patriotic group. And then that's my puzzle for the uh, uh, sop with caramel. Cam camel, sop with camel. I always want to call it a caramel. I always get hungry when I see that. <laughs> but in addition to the digital files, a lot of people ask, well, hey, man, how did you get that? In fact, uh, Rich, when he shows his uh, finished gnome, he used uh, that product there, this Rust-Oleum Triple Glaze. And man, you are not, not going to believe the finish he gets with this stuff. But that's in uh, my uh, shop supplies. He has it in his Amazon store. But you want to go over and check out uh, Hobo with Wood probably, you know, at least once a week because there's going to be something new there all the time. Uh, I stay busy trying to keep these things up to date and something current, something new and fresh. Um, I, I, that's a good point. I always forget to mention my Amazon um, store. So that's a yeah. smart, smart idea of you. Uh, and and uh, if you don't have that in your comments and your videos, Patrick, put that down in the show oh, more. Yeah. yeah. Yep, it's there. I just normally forget to mention it. Guys, the, this this laser makers realm, we do it for the passion of the lasers and the community. We ain't getting rich off of this, and we're spending a ton of money trying to keep this stuff going. And That's every sure. everything you do, every, every contribution mm -hmm. helps immensely. Anytime you need something, if there's a, a you're like, oh, well, I need some more basswood. Uh, you know, if you want to support Patrick, jump over to his and see what he's got. Same goes with uh, Rich, myself. It's nickels and dimes, but those nickels and dimes turn into dollars. So, yeah. you know, if if, you, if you're not in a position where you're in any of our patrons on Patreon and it's not in the cards to do the support, well, you, do, you can help us by just simply clicking on one of our links, and that is greatly appreciated by all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the one thing that I did uh, on my channel this week that I thought was really fun, I don't know if you guys have got a chance to watch it yet. Have either of you watched me designing the Celtic Knot in Lightburn? Rich. Not yet. Not yet. Man, that was a lot of fun. In fact, uh, just click back over there uh, and show. I, I want to. I want to wait till I can sit down and digest the whole thing. Yeah, it's a long video, but I yep. designed all three of those Celtic knots from scratch in Lightburn using nothing but uh, the circle tool and offsets and node editing, and it's not difficult. It was a lot of fun to do. It is a really long and in-depth, it's a 40-minute video. Uh, but you you can learn to do that from scratch and uh, and have a lot of fun. And it's someone asked me, well, why did why why would you not just copy and trace that? Well, you can. Uh, I could copy and trace the Picasso, but that doesn't make me as good as Picasso. I'm not an artist. You're always better making your own designs. It is much better, and it's yours. You own it. Uh, and and it's and the things I said, you know what, if you don't even like the Celtic knot and it's not something you want to learn to do, not that design, but the techniques that I teach in that video, you may find extremely useful in just your regular everyday designing. So it's a good watch, a good, good video. So uh, that's where I've been and what I've had going on. And uh, Rich has had a very, very full schedule since our last uh, visit here at Laser Makers Realm. So now I'm going to throw it over to Rich, and he's going to share with us what he's had going on about the gnome, and take it away, Mr. Rich. Well, um, I've been mostly on vacation for the last couple of weeks. So I had uh, some family things going on. My uh, daughter graduated from Northwestern University. We had to go there for the graduation and uh so i've been and i visited some friends so we started my trip driving to florida and then driving around the south until we wound up at the university and then back home again and just a lot of personal time the last two weeks i've been gone completely came home to over 1500 emails and i hundreds of texts and messages and everything else and I tried to do a little bit of work while I was on the road uh, in the hotels, but um, didn't work out. I, I couldn't get as much done as I wanted to. So I basically did nothing. And just to let you guys know uh, that that these two guys over here, they didn't have a whole lot of time to get this project done because it was my turn to 
deliver a project this week. And I knew it was going to be a gnome, but I was on the road and I wanted to redesign it. So believe it or not, they got this project. <clears throat> what was it? A night before last? Yeah, late, yeah. One thirty a.m. on Saturday morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, got, <laughs> they got this project night before last. Uh, that's when I finished redesigning it because I had uh, I had a USA known before with flags and things like that, um, but <clears throat> I didn't have time to uh, order some flags off. I completely forgot about it before I left on vacation. Didn't have time to order the little flags, so I had to redesign the project. So. Uh, after I got back and I started to catch up on a little bit of work, I got back into the redesigning of the project and uh, came up with this version of it right here. This is my version, uh, which is the same as theirs pretty much, except I put red, white, and blue on the bottom, and I put a uh, glaze on it, as you can see. I, I so, do love that glaze. Yeah, and I just added a couple of stars. And as you can see, it's three-dimensional, but it's all cut out of one piece of wood. And that's why I love my gnomes. And if, you've got, if you guys have seen my gnomes before, you'll know that uh, I have one for just about every holiday. And uh, I, I do have a couple of gnome videos up on my channel. And uh, there you can get, I think I have the Valentine's Day gnome in one video. And I have the Easter gnome in another video. And... Uh, every holiday this year, I'm going to post another gnome. And people seem to love them. This one I made a little bigger than the last one because of the smaller items down over here. So I made this one a little bigger. But you can resize it to uh, any size that you want. So that's basically what we've been doing. We put this whole thing together in the last day or so. So from start to finish, uh, all three of us. And uh, I just want to give credit to the guys because you know they they only got the file of hours ago a matter of hours ago and they were able to get the project done in time for this video and you can get it done too because this really is uh, a simple file uh, i'm just gonna before we get to the q a and i just wanted to uh, make sure you guys know that we are going to get to that q a uh, yep. right after these introductions and a little talk about the gnome and uh, Moondog was the first one to jump in with his comment about uh, lasering glass. We'll, we will get to that. We'll get to all those comments in just a few minutes. But I did want to share with you um, my Lightburn design here. So uh, let me show you in Lightburn what I did and a couple of the other things about this file that I guess the guys didn't get. So uh, I didn't. I sent them a file that only had two, I think, of these guys right here. I think I had three. Oh, did you have three? Yep. 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 Okay. We had three. Okay. Well, I added these stars over here, and that's what I added to mine. And I also added a base down here. Now, you don't have to do the extra red, white, and blue base like I did. You can do it as is. And if you do it as is, this entire thing fits on a... 12 by 12 piece of plywood. If I come over here, change this to inches, you can see up here, 11.5 inches by 10.3 inches for this entire cut. So it's nested sort of in a way where you can, I didn't take time nesting it. I just, you know, did it haphazardly just to fit on that 12 by 12 piece of wood. If you want the extra base, like I have down here, uh, I'm going to include that in the file. This over here is just my logo that goes on the back. Uh, that won't be in the file. But I'll add these three off the work bed. So if you wanted to do them, you can do it on a separate piece. The only reason I decided to do it was I found a scrap piece, or I have scrap pieces from other projects laying around, and that fit, so I decided to do a sturdier base for it. Yeah. But if you wanted to um, resize this now to whatever size you want, all you would do is drag over the entire thing and then just either make it smaller or larger to whatever you want. But the only way that you can resize this is by dragging over the whole thing. If you do it any differently, then the pieces won't fit. And then one other thing is you'll notice that this piece won't be grouped together here. And the reason for that is because 
you have to resize this slot to fit in the wood that you're using. The You have to resize the height up and down of this slot. So you measure your wood, figure out what the uh, thickness of the wood is, and change the height of this slot to the thickness of your wood. And I actually subtract just a little bit from it so I get a really tight friction fit and I don't have to use uh, any glue. And you got, oh. got to change the tab too. I'm sorry? The tab? Uh, no, you're just resizing the slot. You're not, you're not changing the, you, you, you don't want to have this uh, locked up here. You want to have this unlocked like that and you just want to change the height because the tab width is going to be exactly the same. The only thing that you, you're just changing the, the width of the opening so that the wood can fit into it. You yeah, don't have to change I, yeah. the slot. No, you don't have to. I change, I change my tab height. So that if I match my wood depth or width as well. Uh, you can, if you want to, but yeah. it makes no difference because the, the way that, um, the way that I'm doing it, uh, I'm using a friction fit. So with a friction fit, it's it's going to fit it doesn't have to go all the way through the wood you yeah I just, to, yeah just making sure it didn't stick out too far yeah 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 no well i this is uh done for uh 2.5 millimeter wood so i don't think you're going to go any less than that but you're only going to probably go more i, I did my, mine's actually out of 1.3 oh is it yeah uh, well if you do the 1.3 then you will have to resize the the uh tab as well but uh most people are going to do it out of you know Three, three millimeter nominal and that should work uh, but like i said just measure the thickness of your wood so um that works that worked for me uh, the only thing i did was put a, a glaze on it i did all of this from last night last night i cut one out and uh, this morning i actually put the two coats of glaze on it and it needs i need to sand it one more time put one third coat on and then it'll be finished but uh, it's an easy project. One thing I did notice in Lightburn is uh, in version 1.4 that I've never seen before, there's now a countdown timer and the estimated time is spot on, at least on the Roly Lasermatic. Huh. So uh, I've never seen that before. I've always seen the time elapsed. The progress, yeah. On, on the laser tab. Yeah, I've always seen the time elapsed. But now recently I've noticed there's also a countdown timer to the end of the project. So that is really co a cool addition that they didn't publish, or at least I didn't see it when I read through the, the changes that I really like because you know exactly how much time is left in the burn. And on the Roly Laser Matic 10, uh, I believe this entire project, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was 19 minutes start to finish. I'm yeah. going to actually run one of these now um, because I've got it set up. The only thing I've done is drop it into the top left corner of the machine there, the wood, and I've put some magnets on there. And I wanted to show you another little tip, being that I still have a couple minutes left here. So let me come back to uh, here and let me go back to full screen and where I put my magnets. So let me show you how I did that. Um, I, decide, I decided on where to put my magnets by looking at the absolute coordinates, as you see here. Let me change this to millimeters. So you see this spot right here where there's a wide open space. The laser's yeah. not going to go near that. So what I did was I zoomed way in, kept my mouse right there, and I said, okay, so right about 280 is where I should put the first magnet. And then I zoomed out. Now I know that this is all on a 12 by 12, right? Yep. And then I zoomed in way over here and I said, here is the perfect place for this magnet, 140. And then I just zoomed way in over here, going off of this line, which is the edge of the board. And I zoomed in and that is at 290. So that's how I knew where to, uh, let me get off of this now, hang on. And let me go back to this screen and let me change my camera position to the Roly. And that is how I position those three magnets that you see right there. Actually, I put this one off to the side, the one on the bottom right. 
Um, but either side of that corner works. So that's one of the nice things about having a laser that works in absolute coordinates. And with this particular laser, I start, I run every job from either the top left or top right corner. I just slide that wood in there. I don't have to do any framing or anything else. So I just wanted to touch base on that real quick um, before we get started on the Q&A. And actually, I've got this job set up already in Lightburn. I'm going to start this job while we get into um, the Q&A. Very good. And yep, I've got mine set up and ready to roll in, let's see. This is on my big generic CO2 gantry. My magnets, I just use typically a Harbor Freight magnetic tool uh, holders and pop that down on the grate. And then I've had those there forever because I use it to cut my those acrylic uh, rotary jigs that I've been making. And then all this stuff I've been doing out of the 12 by 24 wood. So I just have a template set up and then just leave it there. I haven't done anything bigger yet, so I haven't needed to move them. But that's all it is. So I'm going to run it real quick on the CO2. All right, very good. So a big shout out to everybody. We didn't do a roll call today about who's here. We appreciate everybody who's joining us today. And now we're going to jump into our Q&As and scrolling all the way to the top here. As Rich mentioned, the first person, in fact, he even had his question in the comments before we even went live. He was, <laughs> he, I've been wanting to ask this. He's a, he is a subscriber and a regular supporter of the channel. Moondog, I hope you're still with us. But his question is, Love the Q&A, and I have a question. I have been trying to etch on glass, and I have seen examples where the images is nice and dark. What is the best way to achieve this result? And he has a 50-watt CO2, and thank you. Now, I have not done this, so I'm hoping one of you two can help him with the CO2 question on etching. Well, the, I'm yeah. wondering about what the dark, uh, when you're etching without an accelerant, then you're going to get white. You're going to get a white finish. Um, I use tempera paint so I can get uh, like a black finish on the glass. So um, that that's the way. If, if you're talking about a nice dark image, that's a different color. Um, and then I've noticed that if, when I use different color paints, um, I get different shades of color. Like I can get it in gray. I can get it in black and I can get it in white, or I can just do it natively on the CO2 without uh, any accelerant whatsoever and, you know, get it perfectly white. Okay. And Patrick's got a video coming up on a different type of laser, but Patrick, go ahead and uh, tell him what you do. Um, well, I don't want to give away the fiber stuff yet since... Um, that's coming out in the tutorial. So you'll have to wait for that. But as far as a dark mark on glass, typically the brilliance or Sarah mark or one of those marking sprays will get you there. Yeah. Have, have you used that brilliant laser marking ink on glass? I have not, but I'm assuming it works just fine. I, I have not tried that yet. I'm, I'm, I, uh, and I have not worked with a rotary in my CO2 and I've not worked with, uh, I'm guessing is um, Lightburn has the ability to do some correction. Uh, you can do without having to use a rotary to some degree. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. That yeah. glass that I showed you earlier. Yeah. Was done on the fiber laser with cylinder correction. Cylinder correction. Yeah. I have not played yep. with that yet. That but, that was with no accelerant too, right, Patrick? That uh, that is. Uh, it wasn't naked, but it wasn't an accelerant. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he doesn't want to reveal that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on down. We've got a bunch of howdies. We've got, again, don't want to bother calling everybody out. If you're here and you're here, we appreciate you being here. But we want to make sure we get to all the questions here. And I'm just keeping scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Good to see everybody. And so thankful for Wendy for all your help. Uh, let's see here. Questions, where are you at? Uh, da, da, da. Hi, Wendy. Thank you for being there. Yep. Yes, Wendy. Thank you. And not a, not a question, but happy to see great instructors, Mr. Rich Patrick Hobo. More grace to elbow for 
educating the next generation. Well, I, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe educating a lot about what not to do, but yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, let's see here. Uh, people from all over, South Carolina, PA. Uh, Patrick, Andy H. is asking again, where in Michigan? Can you clarify again where you're going to be and when? Saginaw, Michigan. When? Uh, that tournament runs June, is it 1st through 3rd or May 31st through 3rd? It's that weekend, Saginaw, Michigan. Okie doke. Let's see. And Wendy already clarified that uh, in the comments there. Uh, thank you again, Wendy, for all your help. Uh, how about a hobo one with a stick and a sack? Uh, Carl, I'm not sure what you're talking about. How about a hobo one with a stick and a sack? Uh, that's probably the uh, only a gnome. gnome. A gnome. Oh, a gnome. Okay. <laughs> we there, can do that. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Steve, that, 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 that's going to be assigned to you for hobowithwood.com. Oh, well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. Andrea is asking, did you Mod Podge the glitter cardstock, then laser cut it? Actually, uh, I have I've, one of my videos that I posted on Hobo with Wood, uh, uh, my YouTube, Hobo with Wood. I was asked to make a cake topper and I used glitter cardstock, but I wanted something more stable than just cardstock. And I, uh, for that, and for the first gnomes I did, I used 3M double sided adhesive transfer tape and it was a beast to work with it worked great but i found today uh, 30 minutes before we go live i run to michael's and picked up some spray adhesive and just sprayed an entire 12 by 12 laid my glitter card stock down put it down glitter card stock face down on the uh, laser and did a reverse image cut out and uh back here's some of the pieces that were failures so easy, easy, simple to do. Uh, but uh, I do adhere it with that spray adhesive or any type of, of good craft glue and flip it, reverse cut it. Uh, but, uh, let's see. I was thinking how those known. Uh, let's see. Uh, T-Man says he'll be sending me a couple of bucks soon to help me get with my biscuit. I, I appreciate that. I love my Bojangles biscuits. Uh, Bojangles just rebuilt a brand new restaurant, and they just opened, I think, like May 1st. So you'll probably – this has all happened since I started the channel, Hobo with Wood. I, if you go back and watch my first videos, I was short hair and clean shaven. Well, now I got Bojangles, and if you keep me in biscuits, you'll start seeing me balloon up too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, all right, a uh, long one from Andy here. Speaking of contribution, contribution, Steve, please give us your Zelle info for those of us uh, Ludites that don't want to use PayPal. Uh, all right. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, I'll, I will have to, I'll find that and I will share that before we leave. Uh, the channel uh, leave the live stream today. We're trying to get all that set up to where because there are there are a lot of people out there. You're not the only one who do not want to use PayPal, and uh, Zelle is an option. It's with most of everybody's banks already. It's totally free. It's instant, and uh, the banks prefer it as their most secure way to do it. So we are working to get that set up, but we do have a way, and I will get that information shared with you before we leave out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, v Swan just making a comment. You can learn light burn better by making your own rather than copying or something. And absolutely. Uh, yep. Agreed. Uh, learn by the doing. Best way to learn. And, and the best way to learn is by making mistakes. Yep. <laughs> Watch the, my videos. You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, T Man giving you a shout out there, Rich. He loves your material library and the Roly. Is there one available for the K40 41? Um, there is a library available for the K40. It is on uh, lahobbyguide.com and the forums. 
and uh, if you if you're a member, it's in the members only area. Members will see a new section that lights up that says members only files and downloads. Inside there, look for the cut and engrave settings for the CO2 diode laser, and you'll see the 40 watt that's in there. It's not very extensive. I didn't do a whole lot of work on that, but it's got some baseline settings for different materials for the K40, and it's a good way to get you started. It's nothing like the Roly library. I am going to, after this summer is over, I'm going to concentrate on making libraries for different wattage lasers that I have uh, here in the shop, and I'm going to be putting those up on my store, engraveandcutfiles.com. So... Uh, I will be selling libraries for just about everything. Right now, you can get that K41 for free. Uh, any advanced libraries that I put a lot of hours in, like this Roly Laser Matic 10, uh, you know, though that one I charge $7.99 for, worth every penny. Then just the materials that it'll save you uh, for any 10 watt diode laser, by the way. That one is available at engravencutfiles.com. And um, I'll be spending more time toward the end of the summer. Um, hopefully before Christmas, I'll have four or five of them up for sale that have been, uh, tested, uh, with tons of different material. And by the way, if you have, if you bought that file from my website, the new version is now out version three, uh, where it's got more wood added to it and a lot of photograph settings added to the different materials that were already there. So, um, there is a version three. And you can just go to the store, engravencutfiles.com, click on my account. If you bought version two, it will automatically be there as version three. Just download it again as version three. Install that library, uh, library and you'll be good to go. Very good. The, the laser I'm using today is, the, like I said, it's one of the generic Chinese CO2s. But I upgraded it to hybrid steppers myself nice so i was still able to still able to run those lines as you can see around the engraves pretty fast yeah well i'm on the diode so i'm i'm the slow guy in the pack here but you know what i know that you know every job that i send to this laser comes out right so i don't waste any material all right. I just mentioned that so if people think that they can't upgrade their own lasers, you can. You, there's oh yeah, plenty of upgrades you can do to make them a little faster. Like this there, one was. There are even uh, frame kits out there where you can buy all of the parts that you need, and then pick everything else that you want: the yep. controller, the tube, the you know everything. I'm going to yeah. upgrade the rails on this next. Yeah. Mm hmm. All right, so the Zelle information, uh, if you go to your Zelle and you search for my email, hobowithwood at gmail.com. Uh, that's in the comments at the bottom there. If you scroll down, you'll see it. But hobowithwood at gmail.com in Zelle. We'll get the funds through Zelle to the Laser Makers Realm. And or you can search for the name Fortner Investments, which is also spelled out in the comments there. All right, so back to the questions and comments. Uh, Jonathan Wirtz, uh, a lot of this has been discussed through the, the feed here, but he asked, why are blue tumblers harder to engrave than black ones? So does anybody wavelength? want Wavelength? To... Yeah, yeah, just where the, the collars absorb the wavelength more or less and then makes them more or less difficult to engrave. Especially see that with fiber lasers and tumblers where red is close to the fiber laser wavelength and it'll just and that's what, yeah, I, that's what I was going to ask With, and, and I'm still learning this wavelength stuff so I'm guessing then <clears throat> there are certain colors that are going to do better on diodes, certain are going to do better on CO2 certain are going to be on better on fibers is that right? CO2s, I never, men normally blast through every color without issue but yeah, like the blue diodes and the uh, uh, fiber laser has we'll have more trouble with the blues and reds okay jonathan not real sure and i think you may down here clarify which laser you're working with but there yeah we're assuming then that you're working with the diode and the blue diode laser is probably why you're struggling with that one uh, 
Okay, that uh, Zell information has been added to the bottom of the screen. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, By the way, folks, that Zell uh, information, even though it says hobo with wood at gmail.com, uh, you're not sending it directly to Steve. You're sending it to the channel. Yeah. So that is a separate account that is just for the laser makers realm. Yeah, we're 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 yeah. we're we're working on getting all this consolidated. Yeah, yeah, like the PayPal has my name on it because it needed right. an official name, but it goes to the channel. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, Let's see. More questions. More questions. Lots and lots of comments. And everybody, everybody was chiming in on our blue laser on the blue tumblers. Uh, Jesse that's, Griffin. That's not fair. <laughs> Jesse Griffin. He received his role Tuesday. Jesse, shame on you. Uh, congratulations. I am jealous. <laughs> I am green with envy. Uh. John Ballard, a little late, but hey, brother, we're glad you're here. Uh, Ian from New Zealand. Let's see. Keep on going. Mia from the UK. Hello, Mia. Two questions. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. <clears throat> One. Hi, Ian. My T1 and T2 don't frame anymore. What am I missing? And two, I have two millimeter Perspex, but my laser won't cut it. LM two twenty one. Laser. Uh, okay, so that's uh, not me, Rich. Uh, I don't know what perspex is. Yeah. I would imagine if they're not framing, the little framing tick box isn't checked. Yeah, my like it, does, it's, it's uh, version. Off. Patrick, my my version one point four doesn't frame either. Oh. So I think it's a it's a bug in version one point four. Gotcha. So I've got I've got the same thing going on in in mine on both computers. Now what is the T1 and T2? Tool pass. The tool layers. Oh, the tool pass will frame your orange and blues. Oh. Mine was. Mine's mine's not on both both of my computers. It doesn't frame. Oh wait a minute. Is it just on the diet like uh, the G code devices or? I haven't I haven't checked. Okay. And I and I think I might be on one point four point one. <laughs> uh, let's see here. That's done. And we don't know what Perspex is. Uh, but Ian, clarify that. What is Perspex? And we'll get to you as I come on down to questions here. Uh, acrylic. Huh? It is acrylic. Back to that question. I have two millimeter Perspex or acrylic, but my laser yep. won't cut it. I only use cast acrylic. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know about that. Yeah. It I'm, says, it I'm familiar with that product. Okay, Patrick, it's that's not fair. That needs to be some sort of cast acrylic. Oh, yeah, we are done. All right, let's see here. I'm still, I just got started on the cutting. You're just now cutting. <laughs> yeah, I just finished the engraving. But that's okay, though. All right, let's see. Everybody's uh, talking about, yeah, the, Mer Carl's bringing up the gnome with the uh, stick in the sack. And Jack in the drop's telling me that's homework. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, let's keep those gnomes G-rated, people. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see here. Hi, Rich. Can you throw more light? Why it's not advisable to engrave? Oh, wow. Okay, to engrave PVC using a diode laser. I do receive job orders to engrave on PVC. Yeah, uh, not okay. So you can, uh, you can engrave PVC. There's no question about that. I would suggest that you have a very strong exhaust because when you engrave on pvc you're uh you're creating a chemical called chlorine that goes into the air which number one damages your laser lens number two damages your laser parts uh, all of the mechanical parts so you want to have a really really good suction 
of airflow pulling that out. It's not that you can't. And number three, that that's the gas that was used during World War II to kill the enemy. So yeah. <laughs> um, you got to be careful where you're exhausting it as well. I don't worry so much in my shop because my exhaust is 15 feet uh, up in the air. So by the time it comes out it, and disperses, it's not going to harm anybody. But you might have pets or children uh, walking around outside. Uh, and I, it, it's just a really, really bad idea to engrave PVC, especially if you want your your laser to uh, last for any amount of time. Yeah, I'll say it's it's not only toxic, but it actually it does some damage to the mechanics of the, and the, the physical laser too, right? It will ruin your laser. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Over time, it will ruin the laser because it's a corrosive. The chlorine gas is a, a corrosive. And just like the dust that builds up, if you want to see the dust that builds up, you can clean your laser until it's completely spotless and then run one job and it's still going to look spotless. And you spray a little water onto a um, clean cloth and wipe down that area that looks spotless and you'll see it turns black. So that's the dust and the chlorine dust is going to do the same thing. That, that was too fast, Patrick. Patrick froze. He's gone. Oh, nope, there he's back. back. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Gremlins. Yeah. The gnomes in the system. Or, or, or I was going to say the gnomes in there. Yeah. So here's an example of a, of a mistake. <laughs> I got a, a new regulator that I put on the side of the CO2 and I forgot to lower the pressure down a little bit. So just my base airflow pressure was too high. And so then we get this staining of the wood. And that reminds me that I forgot to turn my air pressure up. <laughs> but the air pressure for the cut's good. These are all nice and clean. There's no black stuff coming off. So at least and the cut pressure was good. Just the base pressure so, wasn't. Uh, hang, hang on one second, Steve, because I think you can keep doing the questions, but I'm going to uh, go ahead and put up a video on the assembly, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, so hang on one second. Yes, mute it so we're not com you know, fighting yep. over each other. Yes, sir. Hang and, on uh, one second. T-Man says, uh, thank you. He will get that K-40 file when red, when you have it ready. He's ready to buy it. So he would like it if you would get that done sometime before the end of the weekend. And uh, <laughs> Patrick, uh, Jack in the shop is asking you, what lens do you have in that CO2? That is a 2.75 inch lens. Two and three quarter lens. It's... Uh, not many people use those. They normally use you know, two, two and a half, and four. But I bought one to try out, and I'm really happy with it. You know, and I think this goes back to when we were talking about you had upgraded you to, to those step from uh, uh, what you do for your motors. You went from stepper motors to high, to the hybrid steppers. Oh, yeah. the hybrid. Oh, yeah. Well, Daniel's asking, can you make a diode laser run faster? And I think the, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing what happens there is you potentially just outrun the power and the capability of the laser. You might make it faster, but the laser is just not powerful enough. Yeah, the speed and power on a diode laser is, is ba it's based on the wattage of the diode. So uh, they're all designed to run at their maximum speed for their power. So, uh, no, you can't. The speed and power is based on material tests. Yeah. So you can see how this goes together here. I'm, I'm going through it step by step. And if you decide to download this file, you can always come back and watch the replay or replay of the live and skip to this part and see how each piece fits together. It can be a little daunting if you've never done it before to figure out what pieces go where. That's why I made this video. All right, so uh, here's a comment slash question uh, from Zings One. This is uh, why, when cutting at 100% shortens laser life and etc. Yeah, I bought your 10 watt laser library, and all cut settings are set at 100%. Um, I don't believe that it shortens the laser power enough where it's an issue. Um, you know, there there is no manufacturer. First off, that's a a Facebook That's fallacy. Some, now, yeah, diodes, like, yeah. diodes will uh, degrade faster, but the amount uh, of less time that you have to use the laser 
is very little the difference between 70 and 100 percent and so. and and my argument for that is if you if you run it at 100 percent and it is doing one percent more usage of your life but if you have to do it at 70 percent, but now it takes two passes yeah you think you're now you're doing it twice as long so you're you're still using that same amount of of, of life of your laser exactly it's not and, more yeah. yeah and this whole this whole i call it a facebook fallacy because this whole uh comment that you hear people making all the time about this is um based on a co2 so uh co2 lasers you have to run them at the recommended percentage so as an example on my 80 watt and on my 40 watt i can only run those at 70 percent of the maximum rating of the tube and when diode lasers came out there's never been a recommendation from a diode laser manufacturer now me being in the diode business before with Cree diodes making led signs i i know that you can run that sign like i used to run my sign at 5500 nits and that that was like 97 percent power uh you know a sign that was maybe say 30 or 40 feet up in the air uh, and you'd be able to see that for miles and it it made no difference in the Cree laser company and a diode is a diode they told me and they're the biggest and best uh diode manufacturer in the world they told me that you can run it at the whole 5500 nits which is almost its maximum power so uh the whole story came from co2 lasers and it was adopted into the diode world on facebook and in the facebook groups and i've never had a manufacturer in fact most manufacturers will recommend most diode ma laser manufacturers will recommend in their uh, material list running at a hundred percent. So, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, there's been some conversation in the chat there back and forth between a lot of the people watching about this whole discussion. And, uh, he's still, he's still a little unsure about it, but what I would suggest is this, uh, it, when you, next time you're in front of your laser and light burn, that job that you're going to do that you don't want to run at 100% and you're going to do it at, <clears throat> at 70 in two passes, look at your estimated time, then do it at 100% in one pass that you can make it happen and look at that estimated time. Yep. And and how much you know, you're going to see that it's you're 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 probably again talking about uh pennies and nickels. You're not you're not going to get them. Yeah, well, one pass at 100% is going to equal two passes at 50%. So yes. if you run it two at 70%, you're using more of your laser life by doing the two passes. Just, yeah. That's that simple. And we've had some clarification on the per specs. Uh, so apparently uh, Ian is uh, across the pond. Uh, he says uh, yeah. over there, per specs is a generic brand name for acrylic. <clears throat> But he was having problem cutting, and if you would, Chris, I'll get to you again later on. I don't uh, just re-clarify what laser you're using, uh, wattage, and, and uh, is it clear acrylic? And uh, and we'll see if we can't. Now we know what we're talking about. Maybe give. And is it, is it cast acrylic? Yeah, and I think we did determine that it was cast. Okay. Uh, but we'll, that's important. Yeah. So. Uh, and, now, and acry it, acrylic will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So, uh, I mean, I can load my acrylic cut, like on the Roly, for instance, with black acrylic, and then change to a different black acrylic, and it won't cut through. So it will vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And, guys, if I have missed your question uh, and you feel like, hey, you didn't see mine or address it, put your, com put your question back in the comments, but do me the favor – if it's a question at the end of your question, put a question mark because <laughs> there's so many of these here. As I'm scanning through, I'm trying not to look at just, hey, hey, hi, how are you? And if I don't see that question mark, you might get skipped. So put a question mark at the end of your question. And we will, we, we, we are coming up on uh, 60 minutes. So we got another 30 minutes. We still got plenty of time to get to everybody's questions. So 
Oh, we uh, got a giveaway today too. Oh we're yeah, yep. Talk yep. About. We're going to. Oh, do we'll it. talk about that in a few minutes. Look, yep. if you guys want to start your timers, I'm at four minutes and 18 seconds left on this job, so I'm just going to do a countdown at the very end to see how accurate Lightburn is. And I'm telling you, you guys, uh, this new version of Lightburn is dead on accurate. It is exactly four minutes right now until the end of the job. And Carl's coming. I thought Hobo was G-rated. Well, who told you that, Carl? I try to keep the channel G-rated because it's monetized, and I need it to stay that way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll yeah. <laughs> in fact, guys, uh, I in my last video, and Carl's already seen it. He's already commented on it about the uh, designing the uh, the Celtic knot. Uh, I touched briefly uh, on what the knot was, where it came from, its origins, how it's been twisted, and, and how things get so convoluted. And I did bring up my favorite sign that was used in uh, the Beverly Hillbillies, and that's the California High sign. Are you familiar with that one, Patrick? Mm -hmm. The California High I, sign? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's Maybe. I don't it's remember. Hurt. It's the bird. <laughs> He's oh, going, yeah, yeah. driving down the highway in that old clunker, and everybody's flipping them off. And, and Jethro was like, oh, hey, hi, right. hi, hi. I remember. So, well, yeah. I, I'm from uh, West Virginia, obviously. So when you look at the shape of the state, we always tell people where we're from by putting our hands like this <laughs> because then it resembles the outside. Like, I'm from right here. Oh, right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good. <laughs> Uh, and in Florida, well, no, I'm not going to say what Florida is. <laughs> <laughs> you all can figure that one out for yourself. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, how can I continue a job in the case of power outage without losing the material? Well, uh, Lightburn uh, just, I think they actually put out a video not too long ago, and they're on the forum about how to re, uh, pick up a job, to restart or to save a job. Well, the way I do it is uh, I, I look at the piece, and I, I first off, you don't move it. You find out exactly where it stopped. You go to the preview window, and you scrub back yep. with the slider to get to that exact spot, and you just click start from here, yep. and that'll restart the job. But that's like you said, don't move it. Don't yep. move the piece. Now I can move the piece on the rolly because I do everything out of the corners. So I can take it off and if it's not completely cut out, I can put it back on and say that one little piece wasn't cut out. I'll just select that piece, do select uh, cut select graphics on the laser tab, hit start and it'll cut that one piece out again and it'll be perfect. All right, more questions. Looking for questions. All right, we got a follow up from Moon Dog. We like Moon Dog. I like Moon Dog. Uh, just a follow up question regarding the glass question. If you paint the glass first, do you leave it on or clean it off after the etch is done? Oh, clean, clean it. it, clean it off. Yep. With the with the clean tempera it. paint, you only have to wash it with water. Yeah, yep. and uh, and tempera paint that's just a fancy word for water paint, watercolors, ain't it? Yes, yeah. temporary, yeah, temporary paint. It's like, I don't know, it's, it's a thicker consistency, but it washes off easy with water. It's like a dollar for a dollar tree or three bucks for that? a big bottle at Hobby Lobby. We played with it in kindergarten, didn't we? Finger paints, yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. watercolors. All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt you guys. Yeah. <clears throat> 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9. I'm looking at light burn. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Now let's see how, how far off this is. Three and a half seconds. Three and a half seconds off. How is that? Everybody's, everybody's always said now. There is one thing that um, I do want to say is that if you haven't gone to your device settings and the additional tab and said read from controller, then the preview and the estimated time will always be off. So the machine has to be on. 
You have to read the, the settings from the controller in order to get the exact time. Version 1.4, you saw that. It was off by only three seconds. So that's it for that. I'm going to go get this piece off of the work bed, and we'll talk about the giveaway in a minute. You know, uh, Chris Gallagher said he can't find tempura paint in Oz. Walmart and Dollar Tree. Where's Oz? Australia. Oh. oh. Yeah. Uh, Carl, this is the one thing Carl mentions. He says it's uh, hard to get a consistent thickness with tempura paint. And Carl, that. I'm my video, my video is coming. It's going to tell you exactly how to do it. <laughs> that's that's why I, I I've not worked with that, but I'm not a fan because you have to brush that. Well, I don't want to give anything away. They no brushes. That, that's why most people have a problem with getting that coverage. Is they're brushing it on, and if you're not just spraying it on, it's hard to get a good constant coverage. All right, all right. I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll divulge a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Since you guys are here watching it and Carl's such a, a loyal follower, the last thing I need to test is this little device right here. And then this video will be ready to go. But this is a little battery powered airbrush. Ah, uh, yep, yep. 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 Spray, spray. As soon as I confirm that this thing will work as well as the couple other methods uh, I have, then you'll be able to uh, basically get into doing glass with a fiber laser or getting consistent temporary paint coatings on whatever you're using for, with whatever laser for, you know, at least if we include this, you definitely can get into the whole, uh, whole game for under 50 bucks. Yeah, I, I Everything like included. And that, that's a battery powered pump. I yes, like sir. that. I, I, I've, I've had really good success with my brilliance, but I have not worked with the Preval Ready Brilliance yet or any Preval systems. But I, that's just another expense for me having to constantly buy those compressed cans with the Prevals, right? Yep. So I yeah, like that. Not everybody has an air compressor to yeah. Yeah. use, or you want to haul that big ass thing around with. Uh, you know, your tiny for a tiny little airbrush, or investing in a big airbrush kit. Proper one's going to cost you at least a hundred bucks, if not more, for some of the more expensive ones. So, I'm just looking at what is cheap and gets the job done. So, one more test to go, and I'm, I should be ready. All right, cool. Very good. So, let me uh, now that I've gotten this off of the laser. There's a couple things that I wanted to talk about. Um, real quickly, first off, this is going to be a giveaway today. We're going to have flat packs. So I'm going to cut these out for everybody and I'm going to give them away. And, uh, here is my final result. And if you look real closely, you'll see there's a lot of dust on there. See it? Yeah. So, uh, I just want to point this out because I hear a lot of people online talking about sanding a project after it's done. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that, especially when you're using wood like this, you know, two and a half to three millimeter wood, because you're going to get pink spots from sanding it. You're going to sand through the veneer. OK, I have just a little shop brush or paint paintbrush, whatever you want to call it. And with the soft bristles and I just take and go over it like this in a couple directions. Now, the important thing to remember is all you're doing is taking off the dust, the soot. OK, and that takes all of it off. See that? Yeah, I've started doing that after you mentioned it last live stream. That Yeah, so that's it's perfectly great. clean. But here's the important thing. When you're taking pieces off, do not <laughs> put your fingers on the piece. Because the minute that you put your finger on that engraved spot right there, you can no longer just brush off all of the dust because the oil from your fingers has embedded the soot into the wood. See how clean that is? Yep. So that's an important step is having a brush to clean it off. Now, if you don't have a brush, you can just get yourself a spray bottle like this and just spray it. Now this one is uh, uh, glass cleaner, 
but I also have a water, a regular water bottle here somewhere, right here, that on some woods, I don't want to clean, I, I don't want, first I'll sweep it off, then I'll spray it with water so that it stains the soot that's left in the scan lines and makes it darker. Or sometimes I'll just spray the whole thing to stain it and then use like a 400 grit paper on the top afterwards. That way I get a really dark stain in the engraving. So there's a lot of little tricks that you can do. But if you just want to engrave it, if you set your power high enough, like on this one, I had the, the speed only at 6,000 and the power at 70. And I got a nice dark engraving on this wood. So if, if you want a dark engraving, that's the best way to do it. If you wind up with an engraving that's not dark enough, you can shoot it, mist it with a little bit of water and let it dry. And then when you're done, do a very light 400 grit sanding on the top. And that soot that gets inside there will be darker. It'll stain it darker. But I like just to use a higher power, slower speed and take my brush and just wipe everything right off. And it comes out clean as a whistle important thing is do not put your finger on any of those because once you touch the wood the oil from your finger will stain that piece of wood so what we're doing today is are, are you when you do the flat packs are you going to be doing them just like that or are you going to do them with tabs and send the whole piece out I'm, I'm doing it just like what you see right here they're completely cut out okay yep. completely cut out you got to paint it yourself so this is a ready to go flat pack. And all you're gonna do is paint it and assemble it yourself. And we're going to do uh, three flat pack giveaways today. If you want to uh, try and win one of those, we'll do the drawing at the end of the video. All you have to do is put in pound, I want one in the comments section of the videos. Now I can't put it in there to show you, but um, you know, uh, you just put the pound symbol, which is, what is that? That's uh, three. Hashtag? Ship three. Yeah, yeah hashtag. hashtag. So hashtag, I want one in the comments. I just, put automatic. It, I just put it in there. Okay, hashtag. well, if you win, you'll be dis yeah, disqualified. Yeah, that way everybody can see it. And, it. and I want one, one spelled out. Okay. It is now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, the letter I, W-A-N-T-O-N-E. Yeah, yes. I want one. Very All good. one word. All one All word. All one word. Both faces, Andy. All one. <laughs> Ian, in fact, Ian, uh, there's been a lot of comments. You got it right. Uh, I, well, just a little quick clarification, which Ian still never got his question answered why he was having a problem cutting the acrylic. Right. Uh, well, we've been back and forth about what this perspective was. The one thing I didn't see yet, are you trying to cut clear with a diode you put you know answer, answer that in there it goes you can't do clear with a diode right guys or white or any type of semi-transparent acrylic you can't yeah. cut any of those so uh you know ian are you trying to cut you know that clear perspex then that's your problem uh, uh it's got to be completely opaque so uh if if you can see through it, if you hold it up to the light and you can see a light source through it it's not going to work um, so it has to be a dark color. First of all, it doesn't have to be a dark color. I can do yellow. I can do blue. I can do black. Um, I can do gray. Yeah. I have a bunch of different colors that I can do on the diode. You cannot just, do anything clear or, uh, he answered red, green, blue, red, green, blue. I can do yep. red, and green, somebody and else blue. Up a, a little earlier did give him some example settings. So hopefully that helps him get it sorted out. Okay. Yeah. The best are thing you, to do is to run a test grid in Lightburn. Now, here's a good question. I have not tried this. Uh, just recently uh, started working with some acrylics, but Gary asked, hello from Florida. Question, can you use a living hinge on three millimeter acrylic? And I can tell you, Gary, that I just received a 36 inch piece of acrylic shipped to me uh, from a couple counties away that had been rolled up I don't know how in the world he got this to roll up, but it's thin acrylic, three millimeters, but he had this whole piece rolled up into a one foot roll, it, and but it was solid. Uh, so I'm guessing it would probably depend on the acrylic, on its overall flexibility. And if you've got it hit, cut right, I imagine you could pull it off. Have you, have you 
Have you guys ever done an acrylic living hinge? Yeah, I tried it. I tried it once, and it just nope. snapped. Yeah, and I and and I, I wonder, uh, you know, if uh, if you cut it, and then just like uh, I had a failure with some of the hardwoods, the heat and the steam made all the difference. Yeah, you know, if you cut your living hinge and you maybe a little hair dryer to help it get a little warm and give it some contour, maybe it would work. I'll have to try that. I don't know. Have you, Patrick? Have you ever had any success never, doing one? Never tried it. Yeah. Well, I say that I tried it, but I didn't really. I, I mistakenly used the wrong universal test card on a piece of acrylic, which had the living hinges on it. <laughs> so um, when I tried to move those those uh, living hinges, they they all three of them snapped. Okay. All right. So well, I've got that scrolling across the bottom of the screen. If you would like to get one of these uh, flat packs shipped out to you, now this is for USA only because I can't afford shipping to other countries. Um, if you want to get a flat pack uh, sent out to you, just type, I want one. Everybody's going to get the free file. So, uh, you know, if you're overseas or uh, outside the lower 48, um, you can just get the free file and cut it out yourself. But to those people that type in I want one or hashtag I want one in the comments you'll be entered in a drawing for one of these three flat packs that will go out um, this coming week and guys no spaces Carl you know better you watch it's on, this it's on the bottom of the screen yeah yeah right there scrolling across there I want one no spaces all one word everything spelled out yeah, if you don't do that, you won't be in the drawing. Uh, so now while we're uh, letting people draw, I wanted to share another screen of another project that I did a few years ago. Uh, let's see. Let me stop the screen there. And I'm going to... Now I have to find it again. <laughs> uh, oh, um, I just have to change cameras. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Camera. There you go, Carl. Congratulations. <laughs> okay so um this is a file that i did a few years ago and that i've been selling online for about two or three years i think it was 2020 or maybe 2019 that i created this file uh, i've been selling it in a bunch of different online stores um, this is a memorial day file that's going to be late but don't worry folks because there's going to be another memorial day so <laughs> really <laughs> yeah, but this is seven layers, and this is the prototype. I never actually cut one out. I designed the file, and I put it up for sale a couple of years ago, um, but I've never actually done one myself. So uh, I did a prototype version uh, the other day, and I did it on cardstock, and I'm going to do this in wood. And if you look around, so what you're seeing here is cardstock paper, seven layers thick. And you see the wood frame around the outside? Well, I've designed it so that it's just shorter. It's an inch shorter, 11 inches by 11 inches. And I'm going to use 12 by 12 inch wood. And I'm going to use all of the pieces that are cut out, all of the frame pieces for the seven layers. And I'm just going to use one extra piece of wood that's cut slightly smaller to put on the top. And this is going to be a 21 millimeter thick framed Memorial Day memorial plaque that you can hang on the wall. And it's going to be absolutely gorgeous, the finished product. I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would, uh, I would, uh, I love that design. And because I am lazy, I'm going to go get me a shadow box. For five dollars at Hobby Lobby. This is designed for a twelve by twelve shadow box. Yep, and that's going to be my frame because I'm I'm just going to cut them layers out and stick it in there. Well, the the beauty is that if you look at the the outside wood that it's on right now, yeah, those will all be scrap pieces. Hmm. So all of those scrap pieces, you're going to be able to stack together and glue yep. together, and just have one more piece of twelve by twelve that's cut with a slightly bigger border that goes perfect. over the top of it. Perfect spacer. It's going to wow, be, be awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
It's going to be absolutely stunning. That and would be a gorgeous shadow box. Yeah. I, I can't wait to make that content. Yeah, that's that's coming soon. <laughs> In fact, <clears throat> I'm going to say that um, I'll probably be finished with this whole project um, by the end of the week. Yeah, that's going to that's gonna be nice. Did that camera switch work? Yeah, it did. Yep. It didn't yeah. work earlier. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking at you. <laughs> it didn't work earlier. <laughs> okay, so let's see where we are in the uh, – we have 27 entries so far in the flat pack giveaway. So, I mean, you have a really good chance of winning right now. We've only got 49 people watching. Uh, 49 people watching. I'm guessing the, the rest of them are out of the country. I'm going to say that we've got, uh, what, five minutes left to enter. So uh, right there on the bottom of the screen, type that in the comments if you want to enter uh, to get a free flat pack. Just type pound I want one in the comments and you'll be entered. Uh, v uh, says, in a future video, can you fellas consider doing a project with a flexible woodcut pattern? Didn't I, didn't I, wasn't, wasn't my uh, bookmark one of my first videos in Laser Maker's Room? I don't know. Patrick, how quick can you pull up? Our... You've done the, oh, you've done the quick. first though. I, I, I was thinking that that was, I did the, uh, bookmark in laser makers round um i'm I, I i'm doing other things right now i can't go is it a living it. hinge <clears throat> yeah the bookmark is three or two living hinges yeah 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 i remember that one if it's not okay. if it's not on laser makers realm i thought i was in laser makers realm if not then it's on my channel v hobo with wood uh but I designed a uh, – I had never seen one. Rich said that his grandmother had one from Italy, yep. I think. Uh -huh. uh, but it was really neat. It was cut out of a, a single piece of ply, uh, plywood that had two living hinges on the bottom corners that wrapped up and formed a triangular shape. And, well, hell, right here it is. Yep. That, I, I was shown that and I was like, what? That's a bookmark? But you just take your open book and look it right over it and it save your place instead of having the little tassels. Your cat oh, out. okay. Yeah. But this, now, this, I, I didn't understand it at first either. And then I was like, oh, wow, that's perfect for the bedside. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've had uh, <laughs> suggestions on taking this. And right now it's, it's just hollow. Someone suggested putting a drawer in here that you can put your reading glasses in. Put a little hanger on it. You can hang your glasses on different different variations. But this file is either on Laser Maker's Realm or it's on YouTube on my Hobo with Wood YouTube. Uh, so V and that's a good one. And I even I have a, another video on Hobo with Wood that is how to design your own living hinge right out of the gate, complete from scratch. So there, I just dropped the link in the chat. Okay, beautiful. So it was there. It. This is one was from your Hobo with Wood channel. Okay. So what on my stand bookmark. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's see here. Okay, but anyway. we're coming down to the wire. We got uh, 33 entries. Last uh, last call for entering into the flat pack giveaway. Pound I want one in the comments. I W A N T O N E. You'll see the other comments with it. Oh, Pound, there it I is on. One. It's on Laser Maker's Rum too. Yeah, I it thought is. it was. Yeah, I thought it's it was. That's where I watched it. I was looking for the wrong shape bookmark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't think of a bookmark being that big and triangular shape. Yeah, and we're down to the last few minutes of the stream as well, folks. So um, you want to, uh, first off, if you're entered the contest, you want to be here because I'll give you the information on how to get it uh, after we do the drawing. And if you have any final questions, um, do them now. We only have... What six minutes left in the stream? Yeah, guys, I you know I I haven't been paying attention. We got forty six viewers, a little low numbers, but I'm glad. I appreciate every one of you that's here. Uh, and uh, if anybody's question wasn't addressed, I I apologize. But you know I was looking for question marks, and I seen several questions without them after I realized, uh oh, 
Not everybody uses punctuation. <laughs> and don't forget, if you missed a question, you could always put it in the comments after the uh, video. Yeah. So yeah. once the comments pop up after the video, uh, you can comment on that. And there will be a, a replay video that will be posted to the Laser Makers Realm as well. You can comment there, too. All right. So should we start the drawing? It sounds like a plan. All right. Yep. So... Let me come back to uh, this one here. And there we go. So here we go. We're going to draw the first flat pack. And I'm going to click draw. And it is Terry Green. In fact, I got to write this down. So let me, let me do this real quick. Terry Green. We got a dog on the screen and a dog barking in the background. <laughs> I hear that. All right, here comes the second drawing. Sharon Simonson. I think Sharon's won before. And she's a regular viewer. Thank you. Yeah, she has, she has good luck. All right. And we are going to do our third and final drawing. By the way, if you happen to win twice, we will draw again. So it's only going to be, uh, for some reason, the StreamYard doesn't take the person out. So uh, if you win twice, we will draw one more time. You can only win one flat pack. Okay, here we go. And Steve, you can't win. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the last 12 hours, I am no doubt. <laughs> There we go, Daniel. <laughs> Daniel is our third winner. All right, so S-H-U-F-L-I-N. Got it. All right, so uh, for the winners, you need to send an email to the L-A Hobby Guy at gmail.com and just put in there, I won the flat pack, and put your name, your mailing address, and I will send you one by the end of this week. So again, uh, the T H E L A hobby guy at gmail.com. Put in there, I want a flat pack, put your name, mailing address, and I'll send you one by the end of the week. Three minutes left in our stream. If you have any final questions or, or comments, now would be the time. Congratulations to all the winners of the flat packs. This file will be available on the lasermakersrealm.com uh, probably by the end of tonight. And for sure, when I post a video replay, it will be under the video replay with a direct link to the download. So anybody looking to download this file for free, uh, just come back. I'll put the video, the direct link underneath both the live and the video replay, and it will be on the lasermakersrealm.com as well. So anybody wanting to download it, download it directly from there. Any final comments, Steve? Uh, I, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Thank everybody for watching. Just a quick reminder, go over to Hobo with Wood, check out what's new, uh, check out both the files and check out my shop supplies. Because as I find new products that I fall in love with, I add them to my shop supplies list. If you find you want to experiment with a new thing, you use those links. It does help me out. I would appreciate every opportunity you can to help this guy out. If you don't want to uh, buy any of the files and you just want to help out Hobo instead of just the laser makers realm, we want you to contribute here. But I do have a crazy little button in my menu. It says adopt a hobo. <laughs> you can adopt me and just send me a little bit of money and buy me a biscuit. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and I, I also want to say that I also have a store, engraveandcutfiles.com, engraveandcutfiles.com. Underneath all of my videos on my YouTube channel, you'll see links to my Patreon, my donation link, as well as my store. And don't forget, we have about 40,000 members of Just a Laser community over on my forum. So you might want to check that out as well. Patrick? www.lightsource.pro that is my website nobody uses www anymore 
<laughs> I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> so, like so that, that is uh, my website where I have different jigs, the air assist kit. I have a couple files. I'm adding more stuff. Um, in lieu of doing an Etsy shop, I've decided just to give up on that idea. Everything's going to go on my uh, shop. So I'm gradually getting stuff transferred and uploaded over there. So let's see, check that out in the links of the, or in the description of all my videos, there are links to my Patreon donation links, Amazon uh, shop affiliate links, that kind of thing. So please feel free to check that out. That's it for today. So we had one last question from T-Man. T-Man, uh, send me an email. Uh, he's asking about where I have my best success selling my earrings. That's a whole nother long conversation. We're at the end of this stream. Send I do have a marketing video coming up too yeah. on my channel. Send, send me an email, hobowithwood at gmail.com, and I will be happy to discuss that with you or connect with me on Facebook Messenger. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about those plans and how I'll get success with my earrings. All right, folks, we're at the 90 minutes. I want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you to Steve. Thank you to Patrick. Thank you to everybody watching. We will be here again in two weeks' time. Sunday, two weeks from today. Uh, please join us again. Thank you, everybody, and bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Appreciate See you. Bye.